Hello there, um, I work for Devon Libraries and I thought it would be useful to make a video just showing you how you can download and use the Libby app. Um, Libby is a free app that you can download onto your um, tablet or phone and it gives you access to hundreds of free audiobooks um, and ebooks from your local library. So it's great if you're having to self-isolate at the moment or if your local library is shut. Um, it means that you can still access free books from your home. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is click on App Store um, or your Google Play Store um, and type in Libby. So you can see I've already typed that in there. And it's Libby by Overdrive that we want. Um, and you can recognise that by the little icon there of a person uh, reading a book. So I'm just going to click on there and then once that's downloaded that's going to give me the option to open that. Okay, so there we go, open. Just going to tap on that one. Um, and once um, the app opens, uh, first of all, it's going to ask um, if you have a library card. So there you go, first question, do you have a library card? So yes. Um, and then it wants to know which library my card is registered with. Um, so you've got three options there, um, and I'm going to use I'll search for a library. Um, so I'm just going to type in Devon. And the top one that comes up there, Libraries Unlimited Devon Libraries. That's the one we want. So I'm just going to tap on that one. And then it's asking whether I want, um, I'm want i registered with Devon or Torbay Library Services. Um, so select the relevant one. For me, it's Devon. Um, and then it's going to ask for your library card number, um, which you will find on the back of your card. Um, and it's usually a C followed by zeros. So put the full number in and then click next and then it's going to ask you for a pin now if you don't know your pin number you can contact your local library and they will be able to give that information to you um, all the contact details for your libraries um, can be found at the website which is www.devonlibraries.org.uk okay so it signed me in I'm going to click next and you can see the home page here. So at the top there, it gives you the option to search for a book. So if you know what you're looking for, you can um, either type um, the author or the name of the book in there. Um, but you will also see, um, as I scroll down, that um, in order to help you just browse the books, it's divided things into different uh, categories of the you know, by theme and genre. So you can see here there's just added, there's adult fiction, junior fiction, some more categories there for you to explore. Um, and this is a particular good one if you've got children or young people um, at home with you. Um, this is reading well for children and it's great if you've got children that are, you know, maybe worried about anxiety or issues with bullying, um, things like that. So that's uh, really great to explore if you've got um, children and young people at home with you. Um, so there's more categories for you to explore there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the top and um, the uh, green bar at the top there that has preferences and explore, we're just going to have a quick look at those. Um, so if you click on preferences, the ones that you're going to probably use the most often are formats. So if I click on there you can see that I can um, narrow down my search by book or audiobook. Um, audience um, is great because you can select the relevant uh, age category and the other thing that's useful is the availability um, so that shows you things that are available now or everything and I'll talk a bit more about that when we look at holds okay so you've also got the option uh, to explore so if you click on explore you can see that again it divides things into different categories um, so for example if I click on um, kids um, again, you can search by preference um, by clicking that one or you can go to all titles and it gives you more filters there, um, including if you click on and more at the bottom there, it then divides it into all sorts of different um, you know, ways that you can look for things, uh, including non-fiction, which is great if uh, children need help with homework and so on whilst they're off school. OK, so I'm going to go back. Um, to the library now and I want to search for a particular book so um, 
I'm going to search for a book that's very popular at the moment, uh, The Testament by Margaret Atwood. And as you can see, as I start typing, it's sort of guessing what I might be looking for. So there we go, The Testament's at the top there, so I'm going to click on that one. And you can see that there it is um, in the top left. Now you'll see that it says place hold next to it. Um, and this is because, um, as with physical books, um, there are only so many copies of electronic books. Um, and if it's very popular, <clears throat> it's probably got a waiting list, um, which this one has. So placing a hold is the same as uh, making a, placing a reservation at your local library. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the picture of that book. And what that's going to do is show me some information about the book so I can find out whether it's something I want to read, what it's about and so on. Um, and it's also going to give me the option to place a hold. Um, so I'm just going to click on that one. Uh, and you can see there that it's telling me, um, you know, how long I'm going to have to wait, how many copies are in use and so on. Um, so I'm just going to click place a hold. Um, and there's some further options there. Now, I've placed a hold on that one, that's great, but I want to have something to read now. So I'm going to go to Keep Browsing, and that's going to give me the option to go back to the search that I just did. So um, I can either go back to library and do another search uh, by another author or book title, but I think what I'd like to do is um, look for something else to read by Margaret Atwood while I'm waiting for that book. So I again, I'm going to click on the actual picture of the book, and if I scroll down, you will see that there is the um, uh, there's information there, including uh, the fact that it's part of a series. So you can see that the Handmaid's Tale is part of that series, um, and the the author or creator is Margaret Atwood. So I'm going to look for more things by her. Um, so I'm going to click on Margaret Atwood. And again, you can then see all of the things that are available by that author. Now, I want to make sure that I've got something that I can read at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Refine, click on that one, and Availability, and I'm going to select Available Now. OK, so there are different uh, options there. And you'll see that some of these um, images have got a little icon underneath them that looks like a pair of headphones. Um, that says audio. So those are audio books and the others are uh, books to read. So I think I'm going to take one of each. So I'm going to go for Bluebeard's Eggs, another story. So I'm clicking on that one. Um, and uh, you can see that there is the option there to play a sample first uh, before you borrow something, which can be quite handy. So I'm going to uh, just borrow that one for now. So borrow, I'm going to click on borrow again. And then once that's available, I'm going to um, keep browsing. So I have got an audio book, but I would also like a book to read. So I'm going to go keep browsing, click on the back button again. Um, and I'm also going to take out <coughs> um, the year of the flood. So I'm going to borrow that one. Borrow. Now, I've now got uh, taken this book out, uh, which I can read straight away. Um, but I saw another book there that I thought might be interesting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Keep Browsing. Um, and I'm going to just click on that one. And I'm going to place a tag on it. So I'm going to see where it says tag, the third one down there. Um, and this is handy just for sort of um, sorting books into categories, you know, whether you thought it was good or bad. Um, and what I mostly use it for is... Um, tagging books that I'd like to read in the future. So I know that I've already got the Year of the Flood out. It's probably going to take me the full loan period to read that. So I don't want to take this book out now because it will probably run out before I get a chance to read it. So I'm going to just put, uh, click on that little pile of books there and that's now added a tag. Um, and I'll show you what that means. So what I'm going to do now is in the bottom right, I'm going to go to shelf. So I'm going to click on shelf. And now you can see this is my shelf. So it's like my physical bookshelf. Um, and the top one there's loans. So if I click on that, you can see that I've got those loans out. If I go to holds, you can see the holds that um, I took out earlier. And again, telling me how long I've got to wait. I'm uh, going to go back again. And then if I click on tags, you can see that where that pile of books is, if I click on there, um, there's the Penelope ad that I tagged earlier. So that I know that when I finish the book that I'm reading now, I can then go to my tags and think, oh yeah, I remember now. Um, that was a book I was interested in reading. So 
I'm now going to go back to my shelf and show you um, actually reading the book. So there we go. We've got um, The Year of the Flood. So I'm going to click Open Book. <coughs> and once that's actually finished uh, downloading, you can see that I now have the option to read the book. So if you tap in the middle of the screen with your finger, it will either bring up your options or make them go away. So I'm going to bring up the options there. And you can see uh, that there is a white circle with a line, and that enables you to go backwards and forwards in the book. Um, so you can go back to the beginning or go to a different place. Luckily, with audio, uh, with um, books that you've downloaded, uh, where you leave off, it remembers the page you're on, so it's quite handy. Um, so I'm now going to click and tap in the middle of that and then I can use my finger to swipe left or right to actually read the pages like you would a normal book. Okay, so I'm going to tap back into the middle of that. And the other useful thing that you'd probably like to know about is these three lines at the top here, top right. If I click on those, it's got more options there. Um, so you can have a, a you know play with those and see what they do. But the one that I find really useful is reading settings. So if I click on there, you'll see that it gives me options about how I want to read my book. So I find that as I get older, I find it harder to read small text. So text scale will allow me to alter the size of that. So if I put my finger on the black square and just drag it along, you'll see that it then increases the size of the text. Um, the other thing that's quite useful is the brightness setting. So bright is the default one. Um, you can also have sepia, which makes it darker, or actual dark, which is black with white writing. Um, so it allows you to sort of find a setting that uh, makes it easiest for you to read. Um, I also find that those last categories can be useful if you're reading at night and don't want somebody else to be disturbed by the glare of the screen. OK, so I've gone back to bright and I'm going to click done, which will get rid of that. And I'm going to click in the middle uh, so that I can read it. And then I've stopped reading now, so I'm going to click in the middle. And I'm going to go back to my shelf. OK, so that's that book. Um, and then I've got my audiobook here. So if I click on Open Audiobook, you will see that um, there it is. It's ready to, to listen to. Now, that circle with the triangle in it, uh, that's the play button and also the stop button. So I'm just going to uh, switch it on so that you can hear it reading. And then he won't give the old rent gouger the satisfaction. He won't give the old Becca rent could handle him when she. Becca could handle him when she. OK, so that's how you um, turn it on and off. Again, you've got the white uh, circle, which you can use to scroll backwards and forwards. And also the three red, uh, three lines at the top right, again, as it allows you to um, uh, look at the different chapters and so on. OK, so I'm now going to just uh, go back to my audio book and I'm going to go back to my shelf. Um, so I, um, with, um, or with books that you download, um, what's great is you never have to worry about taking them back, returning them, because once the loan period is up, the book will disappear off your shelf. So you can never accrue any fines with these because they can't go back late. Um, but the downside of that is that if you are still reading a book and you come to the end of that loan period, it will disappear unless you renew 